Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and as you can see there is a little robot that's following a line and we've been spending a little bit of time enjoying it. But here is a catch which I am not going to tell you for a bit. So let me introduce my two very special guests that are on either side of me. So can you tell our viewers your name? I'm Nayani. Nayani. And how old are you Nayani? I'm 12. 12 years old and on my left I have another guest. I'm Hiram and I'm 13 years old. Okay, so 12 and 13 and they have put this entire setup that you see in front of you together. This robot actually has the ability to maneuver a few obstacles. So you have been leading this project, is that correct? Yes. Okay, do you have a name for it? Uh, the name is RoboX and our team is also RoboX. Robo X, such a boring name. Couldn't you call it like Wall E, for example? We didn't want to call it Wall E. Okay. Okay. So, for everyone that's watching, can you uh, briefly elaborate on what exactly this setup is? What is the robot? What does it do? Uh, why does it have two hands and uh, rubber feet and stuff like that? So, can you elaborate on that? So, this robot is currently um, running on the Lego Mindstorm software. Okay. And so, as you can see, it is following this black line on the white sheet. Mm -hmm. And we have not told it what line it has to follow. So it just senses around and uh, follows whatever line we give it. Okay. So now if we go about and change a b part of the line, it can just go and do that. Okay. But if you were to program it, if you were to let's say have red and green lines and say only follow the green lines, would it work in that way? Yes, we could do that. You could do that. But that would require a lot more software programming and stuff. Programming, like. okay. yes. So from a conceptualization, when you perceive this idea to actually bringing it into reality, how much time did it take and what were the things that you had to go through? Well, it took us two weeks to get the main idea. First, we brainstormed about it, what should we do? So we decided with wheels, but then we thought that there are also obstacles like slopes. So it was not able to get, it was not able to do the slopes. So we change it to tracks. Okay. So then, now we have this robot. Okay. Now it also has two arms that are sticking out. Why does it have the two arms that are sticking out? So the arms that are sticking out, that's for, uh, it also is uh, the robot, after it does the line following, it goes to a rescue area. That's a box that is 90 centimeters by 120 centimeters big. And so in that, there are three balls that are scattered around randomly. Okay. And there's one corner which has a slight, um, wedge on it, so the robot has to uh, put all of the balls into that corner. Okay. Okay. So essentially it is tasked with finding these balls and then essentially pushing them into the uh, rescue. a rescue corner. Okay. And also I can see two lights that are coming from uh, the robot onto the floor. Can you elaborate on what that setup is? So it is a light sensor and it's used to sense the line. So okay. the light sensor senses the line, we keep the values of we take the average of the white value and the black value and we f uh, keep it in the program and it senses that and moves according to the line. All right, perfect. So how uh, difficult was it for the both of you to come up with this? I'll ask this to you individually and what was the biggest challenge that you faced? Um, coming up with this exact model it took us about one whole month of time, of free time. Okay. So we did not have the, like, uh, during school time we had to do school work. Okay, wait, I'm actually so, going to stop you there. So during school time, they actually had to study, fulfill their homework and do everything they have to do. And then in their free time, you actually came up with this. Yes. Yeah, okay. And um, it was sometimes frustrating and sometimes fun also doing this work. But um, I enjoyed it overall. Okay. And what about you? How was it uh, managing school work and a hobby at the same time? I think it was nice. School really supported in a lot of ways. Like, um, sir used to help us and they gave us the facilities so we can make the robot. Okay. So, what was the biggest hurdle you faced when coming up with this final project? What was that one point where you got stuck and were frustrated? Ki, will I be able to fix this problem or not? I think it was in the slopes where there are intersections because when it's going up, the sensor is up. So, sometimes it won't sense the line. So, that was the biggest problem. And uh, who was the biggest supporter in terms of uh, helping you come up with this uh, project and then helping you put it all together? Or was it just uh, the two of you doing it yourselves? It was us and uh, like a lot of people did help us. Uh, um, our coach, 
my parents and also the school like um, we had this facility at school to like lay out a mat and you know, use a robot test over there and that really did help us to do this okay so now a very uh, proud moment is that uh, these two out here have actually won a competition and are going to represent india in japan is that right yes yes we came uh, first in um, the indian nationals that was in bangalore mm -hmm. and um, so we're going to japan and okay there'll be a few things that will be different in japan from this uh, current mat okay. one thing is that like in the places where the robot is doing the intersections mm -hmm. you see that it uh, there's it just has to go straight but over there like uh, there could be green markers which will tell the robot to either turn left or right okay so that that's going to be something challenging and how, how how do you feel now that you've won in india you're going to be up against international students of your age who've probably done similar things so how do you feel about that i think it will be very tough over there because the mat will be really big and they'll change it in every round okay so our program needs to be very good and the robot needs to be very robust so did you take inspiration from any science fiction movies to come up with a design because the face looks a little bit like wally -E. have you seen wally -E? yes i've seen wally -E. yeah. so did you take inspiration from any of your favorite animated characters films anything while coming up with a design uh, we wanted to make it as um, small as possible so the wally -E kind of design really uh, inspired us okay. because wally -E, uh, as you know it co compacts into one small box and mm. then it can extend tracks and arms Okay. So our robot looks kind of like Wally -E because of that reason. Okay. So before we actually started shooting, there was one thing that the kids told me, which was very interesting, is even uh, though the tires have these little red rubber feet, they have put rubber bands on it, and there is a specific reason for that. Do you want to tell them why it is? To get more friction, because if it's only the plain uh, red um, rubber things, it's like it's collecting lot of dust. So if we keep rubber bands, it'll get more friction in the slopes. And that—that that is uh, that, that's a little neat jugard, if we can call it that, that the kids have come up with. So, is there anything else that you would like to tell our viewers about the robot? I would just like to tell that um, even though right now you see that the robot is running properly, mm. it's not always like this. Like yeah. uh, just a few minutes before um, we were filming this, um, the robot did not work at all. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. So you cannot completely trust this robot. <laughs> so that we have another member in our team abhimanyu okay yeah, yeah. so it's a three member team that is going to participate in something like this and any message for anyone that is looking at this and wants to get into robotics is there any kit that you think they can go out and purchase in the market that will help them get uh, started with uh, building and playing with robots uh, like i don't have any kit in mind but like any robotics kit would do if a person is uh, enthusiastic and really wants to do robotics So can you tell me about where did your interest in robotics start how did you find a passion for this and then eventually come up to this point So dad was in the CS conference and in the newspaper we saw an article about it all of the cool stuff happening in there and we saw a picture of this Lego rattlesnake and then we decide and then we called dad and asked him hey check out this stall of Lego Mindstorm it's really nice could you buy a kit for us So then he checked it. it was a pre-launch the next time he went he got the kit for us and then we stuck we started out Hiram was the main one who used to work on it but we didn't have much of a coach facility or neither did the school focus on it much mm -hmm. and so then um so Hiram did on his own but there was no programming only construction he used to do then we came to Noida over there in Shrinathar school it was part of the curriculum robotics was a part of your school curriculum yeah okay. so then we learned robotics in 6th we worked with uh, ev3 lego mines toms and they did wro and this year we were participating in robo cup mm. yeah so that's how it is okay now you actually spent some time with a man who does work in robotics professionally for a living and his name is samay so uh, what insights did you get from him what was your learning from someone who's doing this professionally So like uh, when we talked to Samay he told us about uh, when he started um, doing robotics he was in grade 11 and uh, then he they didn't have all of the facilities that we now have so we are I'm currently in grade 8 and doing this so he he told that um, we should be very lucky to be doing this and also um, we should explore different parts of robotics not only like a certain field of it and get addicted to it but just explore overall what robotics what all you could do in robotics 
All right, okay. So we also actually had a chance to speak to Samay a little bit about his opinion on uh, this setup and we're just going to quickly take a look at that. I'm Samay Kohli. I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Grey Orange. Uh, we are a robot company which builds robots for warehousing and robotics. Uh, we've been into this industry for some time. Okay. So uh, you have seen the project that the kids are working on and our audience has of course seen the demo right before yeah, you've come in. So what do you think of uh, the project that they've been working on? No, I think uh, it's actually quite uh, incredible to what, you know, what they've done at their age, right? And, you know, I think both from an age point of view also, I think what they've shown is you can build very complex things, but how well do you do it in execution is the most important thing. Uh, I'm a strong believer of if you can make it actually work on the day you need it to work, mm -hmm. right? That is far more complex then actually how many you know lines of codes went into it or not right and what i saw you know today and you know i've seen is like it's really amazing that you know when it needs to work it works flawlessly right and i can't tell you and i'm sure they are also aware of this that how much effort would have gone in to just get that perfect execution right in and that's much more important than did you do it with 10 sensors or 10 motors it doesn't matter right it needs to work at the time it needs to work, and I think that's the toughest thing, uh, you know, in doing this. Okay, so another question is, uh, of course, you were building uh, robots at the time when the educational system was more about textbook study, and at a certain level it still is. Uh, so what is your opinion on stuff like this being uh, included in school curriculums today? Because even when I spoke to the kids, they were like, it's uh, they do it in their extra time, their free time, it's not a part of the school curriculum, but internationally you see that certain things like shop class or yeah. robotics or electronics is more treated as a part of the curriculum so what's your opinion on a change of such sort in our educational system so you know i have a like a 13 year view on this so i think my overview is you know i mean we can be quick to dismiss that we don't do yes we don't do as much as we should in the classes but you know it's come a long way right from you know 13 years ago where you know doing robots or even you know when we did it in college it was almost like why are you wasting your time to today, it's acceptable, right? And extracurricular activities are happening around it. And, you know, it's really nice that that exposure is happening. I think there is a parity between, you know, there are really good advanced schools which accept it much more. They introduce the curricular programs to schools which, you know, shy away from it and say, you should do it, but do it outside, right? Mm. So I think we've come a long way. Is it really integrated into our system? Not yet, right? But I think at the pace at which we're going, we're, we're India's pretty much ahead uh, in doing that in. And I think the biggest part, which I think is that it's not shooed upon, right? I mean, that's the best part, right? People, uh, when kids are working on it, you know, teachers now appreciate it, they do it, right? And that's why there's much more exposure. Mm. And it's, you know, they'll get a pat in the back that, you know, you're doing a good job versus why 10 years ago, they might not, they won't get a pat, they'll get, he's too distracted in other things, right? Yeah. So I think that's where we're headed in the same way. And you also have to understand that I think parents are also evolving along yeah. with this, right? It's acceptable. They see why all of this is so important, mm. right? And I think I think you focused on, you know, the kids, but I think the, the compliment has to go to both the parents also here. So I would say, you know, teachers can play a role. We can play a role. But the biggest role is the parents that they have to play the role for in the support, getting this for yeah. the support. Okay. Uh, now, when it comes to a topic like robotics and engineering, we've seen that a lot of countries are far ahead of India when it comes to the kind of work that they're doing. And we have seen some very interesting uh, concepts come out. Like we, uh, an Indian team I met recently was working on a rover that's going to go on the moon. They've won a project for that. We have a few drones that are going to be deployed in rural areas in India to scare ele elephants away by making sounds of lions so that uh, the elephants don't come into these uh, small villages wow. and towns. So we've seen a lot of tech innovations coming in India. But when we try to compete internationally there are a lot of times because of the progression that those countries have had uh, we seem to fall a little behind what's your opinion on our position internationally when it comes to robotics and work there and your experience with the international market so I mean I think you're spot on it's really tough I think it's also a perception that Indian companies are not perceived uh, to be doing all of this stuff abroad right I think, you know, I don't want to uh, take the limelight away from them. But if you look at Grey Orange, we, we compete only internationally, right? And there are probably, we, we compete so well with them, right? And that's the reason of, you know, us just kind of trying to lead the way, right? Which is saying that, you know, you need to do. So I think the key point here is going to be, there's nothing that can beat persistence, right? You have to build. 
our products need to be highly reliable they need to work around the world but i don't think there's a problem like you know we can't do it i think that's 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 a thing of the past right i think uh, there will be companies like gray orange which are the first ones to do it so it's tough for them right it'll get easier for you know the companies do because then it's be like okay they, you lay the foundation for the other companies we're laying the foundation right i'll give you this example when in our college right at bitspalani when we went in 2004 when we were going out to take part in competitions right we were literally frowned upon right that you know nobody ever wins them it's a waste of time right there was support but it was like very looked down upon right and i think we fought through the first one or two years to take part mm-hmm. once we took part right now it's like i see every single competition they're there right so it's really about people it's like we are supposed to do our bit other people are supposed to do their bit so i think internationally i don't think there's any dearth of intelligence and you have to uh, uh learn that you know i think one in three or one in five startup founders are indian by origin right so CEO i think you of google and microsoft are yes, from yes, india so, so you yeah. know so i think we can do it right uh, and so can the americans and so can the germans yeah. everybody can i don't think it's the world's becoming very flat it's not going to depend whether you're an indian or american or a mm-hmm. german or a japanese it's going to depend how hard you work at it right and you want to solve the problem or not so that's that's what i would say so my final question is for all the kids that are watching this and have been motivated by seeing the demo of this robot what is your message to them if they want to get into this field if they want to start building things or if they want to break the barriers and try something they've never tried before i think my only message you know i think these guys have shown it it's the only message is going to be that you know you need to really work hard there's no replacement for working hard right if you work hard at a problem and keep working hard at it right i think there's nothing that you cannot beat right and that's why i say this if somebody tells you you cannot do this that's the best thing you should go do because you know that's it motivates you the max when somebody says you're not supposed to do this right and that motivates you so i think kids need to understand that everything right that's told to them that you know you're not supposed to do this right uh, uh you cannot make a robot you cannot build a car right that's the stuff that you have to work hard at it and there's no replacement for hard work yeah, right it's like so nikola that's... tesla was told that ac is not the way forward for electricity and he said yes it is right so, so i think that's that's the message there all right. right thank you so much for this thank you thank you so much well there you have it guys that was a look at uh, the robotics team from india that has won and is going to go and participate in the robo cup that's going to happen in japan in a few months and well you could always pray for your support that these guys win representing india thank you so much for joining us as always if you want more videos like this one you can always write to us or let us know in the comment section below we will catch you in another video it's goodbye for now Thank you.